On today's episode, guys, we talk about the WWE Superstar Shakeup, and I am joined by my co-host, Corporate Cappy, in the studio for that. We go over the rumor trades and the trades we think should happen this week on the WWE Superstar Shakeup. We also got some news and rumors around the world in the WWE. All that and more right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a special episode of the Sunday Night Heat entitled WWE Superstars Shake-Up. Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian-based WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. The episode of the Sunday Night Heat is recorded offline right here on Spreaker. After it's done recording, this podcast will be posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWP, and is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand Wars. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBarWP and join on the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available now on Facebook and Instagram by searching up no holds bar WP. So go give us a follow and a like, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host... The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week, and especially this week, actually, and only this week, maybe even some more in the in the future, we'll see. But I'm I'm joined by my co-host, the Blissful Boss, it's Corporate himself, Cooper Cappy. Ratings up this week, <laughs> or down? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're up. I think I'll give you a fair up. Um, How you doing? How you doing? But he's joining us on this very special edition of the Sunday Night Heat. It's usually done by me alone, but you know what? We needed to include a co-host on this part because we're we're talking WWE Superstar Shake Up, and that is the title of this episode of the Sunday Heat: The WWE Superstar Shake Up. And I will say that this does feel rushed. Yeah, um, it, it sucks because we just got it announced like this past week, so we're you know didn't give us enough time, Vince. To uh, prepare for this. We could have done another draft video, but hopefully there's still going to be a draft at some point. Yeah, we'll see about that. Um, so today we're going to go over some current rumored uh, trades that we've been re- seeing and reading for the last couple of days, uh, especially yesterday, and we're going to discuss them. We'll go out, or we're going to give out uh, what we think should happen during the trade shakeup this week, and our trades, and give us uh, reasons, give you guys reasons for each one of them. Uh, we're also going to predict some NXT call-ups that might happen this week as well. So we've got some interesting ones for you as well. And at the end of the show, we'll do some uh, news and rumors. We've got a couple of them, and uh, maybe we'll play the headline theme music. We'll see. We'll get there. Uh, but those are some current news and rumors going on right now in the current WWE state, which is uh, in a new season mode. New season. New season with WrestleMania just ending. The ultimate thrill ride. Yeah, we are the week, <laughs> the week removed from WrestleMania. Um, so we'll get into it. Uh, let's get to the rumor trades first. And we got a lot of them. This is a big shakeup this week. Is a total of eight or eight trades. So eight superstars from Raw going to SmackDown. Eight for from SmackDown to Raw is the rumored ones we see. So take it with a grain of salt. This is uh, not confirmed. These are just rumored, so and, you know, uh, don't take it seriously. And, and for any of you that didn't know, the show it's going to spread over both days, so it's going to be on Raw yeah. and SmackDown. So you guys didn't know, it's going to be on Raw and SmackDown. It's not just going to be on the three-hour Raw, and then we're going to continue as uh, everyday everyday things on uh, Tuesday. Uh, no, we're going to get on both days. So the first trade is not even a rumor trade. It's what we want to happen, and it has to do with commentators. And that's JBL. Going from SmackDown to Raw for Byron Saxton. I don't even care about Byron Saxton. I just want JBL gone so we can get Ronaldo, Ronaldo back, back on SmackDown. Yeah. That's the only reason why. And then Ronaldo can work with Byron Saxton and Tom Phillips and... David Otunga David can go Otunga. bye-bye. Yeah. He can God, go do his yeah. lawyer thing. Yeah, see you later, Otunga. We, we just need, need, need Ronaldo back, and that's yeah. unfortunate with his whole mental illness and mental health problems going on. With the whole JBL situation, who knows how much of that led to him not coming mm-hmm. back, but it's unfortunate. And we got some uh, news about Ronaldo, so stay tuned for that at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> getting to the rumor trades, so let's go. We'll start off with SmackDown, and the rumor trades for SmackDown are going to Raw, and we'll just list each superstar, and we'll give our thoughts about it. So number one is AJ Styles. It, seriously, I don't think he's moving. 
I honestly, I after what we've seen this week on SmackDown with the whole Shane segment, I know there was a teasing of him punching Shane at the end, but I think there was just a joke and a, like a mutual kind of respect between the two. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think they would have done that if he wasn't going anywhere. Or if he was going somewhere. Sorry. I just don't want to see him move at all, period. He, because SmackDown needs AJ Styles. He's the number one on SmackDown, and he's going to go to Raw and be the number two or three behind Roman Reigns yeah. and Finn Balor. And I heard people going, oh... Shinsuke Nakamura just be the number one. Yeah, but he's on selected dates. He's not going to be there every single week. He's got to do his NXT dates that are coming up in the next month and a half. He's still scheduled for them. So, like, he's not going to be on SmackDown all the time. They're not going to give him the full workload yet. Or I don't think at all. And plus, he can't really talk yet. No, he's not uh, good in the English language that much. So, I, you can't have him as your number one. Styles is your perfect talker, your perfect promo, and literally the perfect wrestler. So... I mean, no, there's no puns to Ty Dillinger. I'm just saying Styles is your number one, your perfect guy on SmackDown. And if he goes to Raw, he's going to be overshadowed by the, the Roman Reigns and the Finn Balors. And yeah. he's, he's not going to be used as effectively as he will on SmackDown. Exactly. So that's the one rumor trade, and we hope it doesn't happen. Next is Dean Ambrose going from SmackDown over to Raw. I can see it. If it happens, I can go with it, because if it only leads to one thing, and that is a Shield reunion to face this new evolution that's being uh, rumored to be... Being made, but we still have yet to see any updates on it. I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe they're doing something with Pete Dunne or trying to get him secure on Raw or something. I don't know. But Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens are the only ones that are look like they're they, you know they're buddy buddies, and we haven't even been given a reason why. Like, there's been no backstage uh, promo or something in the ring that these guys have been talking together. It's only like they've only appeared together and beat up someone. There's no like we haven't even given a backstory and why they're together. So I think it's still in the works. This new evolution. And plus, the only way it's going to happen is Corbin's going to have to beat Ambrose for the title this week. Yeah, for the Intercontinental title. Yeah, because uh, champions apparently are exempt. We don't. We don't know. But what even the whole that, Kevin Owens that is. is not going to bring the title over to SmackDown. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. According to this, I don't know. We'll get into that after. Uh, <laughs> next rumor trade: Bray Wyatt from SmackDown uh, over to Raw. Now, see, this makes no sense. I don't understand that. Why would Bray Wyatt? What is his? What business does he have to go on Raw right now? Who's he going to feud with? Matt Hardy? Like, what the hell? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're doing it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, like, Bray Wyatt's the one rumored. We haven't read a rumor about maybe Luke Harper going with him. Or, or Eric, or Eric Rowan. Rowan going with him. If Eric, like, what is Eric Rowan going to do if Bray Wyatt gets traded? What, yeah. what, what is he going to do? He's not going to have a single uh, push. He's going to go back to being catering. He's going to be the catering guy for SmackDown. Titus will be the catering guy for Raw. You got your, your Eric Rowan catering with some, you know, that's going to be like some Halloween creepy shit food over there. Um, anyways, uh, so Bray Wyatt, yeah, it doesn't make sense. We don't agree with it. We hope it doesn't happen. Literally just makes zero sense and is useless. Next, we're going to the Usos going over to Raw. Now, they have the SmackDown tag team titles right now. Yeah, so that's another weird rumor because if what we're understanding, our understanding is that there's no champions getting traded. Well, why would the SmackDown championships go to Raw? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. The SmackDown tag titles? So maybe they're losing them. Again, in order for Ambrose and Usos to get traded, they need to drop their titles. Or do they go over as vacant? Yeah, like, do like, they have I to say that Maybe they go over and the titles get vacated. That, 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 that would be putting the Usos... That would be burying them. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. The only way I could see it is if they lose it to it like a team that comes over from Raw, like mm-hmm. that night, like Gallows and Anderson, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just strange. Odd. Uh, next, rumor trade, Carmella. I can see it happening. Uh, maybe bring bring her back. Maybe I think they've been, for a long time, everybody's been wanting to put them back together, uh, Enzo and Cass and Carmella. Seems like Enzo and Cass needs, uh, needs a manager again, something to build off of. And they were great. When they were in NXT, all three of them together, and they had the whole promo thing going, and Carmella was like their, you know, it almost looks like they need a manager. So, because the Enzo and Cass got nothing for them, like going for them right now on Raw. So I think they do need to reunite, but not on Raw. We'll get into that after. Yeah. Uh, next from her trade is your girl Alexa Bliss. Great. Yeah. I don't know. Well, actually, it's, I know how I feel about that. The only way it happens is if you know your girls get switched. That's the only way I want it to happen. Yeah. But if it happens, it has to be a good trade. That's the only way we agree with it. If it's a bad trade, like Carmel or Alexa Bliss for like uh, Alicia Fox, then what the hell is that? She's doing such good work on SmackDown right now. I don't know why they'd want to move her, but. I think she's like basically she is the top besides the only being champion. Alexa Bliss is your top girl on SmackDown. I, I don't understand that. Why would you want to trade her away? And I feel like she'd be way overshadowed on Raw by Bailey or Charlotte or Sasha. Does make if they're gonna do this whole stupid thing where like 
Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon are getting letting personal issues like cloud their judgment because Alexa Bliss pisses them off all the time, and that's why they're trading them. That's stupid. And that makes Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon look like fucking idiots because that's not what they're all about. They're about giving people opportunities and, and letting the new people shine, and that's what Alexa Bliss is. So I, I, it would make sense for Alexa Bliss to trade or leave SmackDown and go to Raw. Yeah. I know you want to shake up everything, but that's not the shake up you need. But what about when they said that we're putting the talent before the exactly the authority? They're just contradicting themselves. Yeah. Uh, last two trades from SmackDown to Raw: Mojo Rawley. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Literally, he just, guy just won the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and Great. they're, they're going to build this guy like that for like the next year. But like, what what is he going to do on either brand? I don't know. I don't care about Mojo Rawley at all. It's this is just like a match trade. If it happens, it happens. We don't care. He's uh, gonna do the same thing he did on SmackDown. The last SmackDown a Raw trade, and I kind of agree with it. If it happens, I kind of think he needs a, a new shakeup in uh, Miz over to SmackDown. In Raw, Raw. Sorry, Miz over to Raw. See, I would like Miz on Raw, but I don't know if they're gonna let him have the freedom that he has on SmackDown to say what he wants. Yeah. I just if they go put him over on Raw, I'm just I'm trying to think of some feuds off the top of my head right now he can feud with, and you know to be as intense as he did with John Cena, no, depending um, on how long Jericho's around. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, jaw, <laughs> jawing feud. John. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay. If it happens, I can. It, it, it's one well, of those on the fence kind of trades. But Miz is, is he's revitalized his career on SmackDown the last yeah. year, and I just don't know if he's going to have the same success on Raw that he's yeah, had on true. SmackDown. True. So get another SmackDown people for the Raw going over the SmackDown people. I'm trying to say <laughs> okay, this is ridiculous. Um, it, these are some interesting trades here, ladies and gentlemen. So again, these are just rumors. So take it with a grain of salt. We will give our opinions on each of them. So, number one, Seth Rollins going over to SmackDown. What? So, is this like a Shield member for Shield members? So, Ambrose for Rollins? What? Okay, here's my thing on this whole superstar shakeup thing. You should not be trading the top stars on each show. No, you need to shake up your mid card in, in like the jobber women's talents. division and the tag teams. And yeah. the people that aren't being used are the only ones that should be shaken up in this. You should not be trading your main core superstars from each brand. What's yeah. the point? Literally. Uh, I can't see Rollins doing it. If Rollins is going over the SmackDown, you need to build him as your top guy. But he can't. He can't go over SmackDown if Styles is still going to be there. You got Nakamura there now. And if uh, Cena, whenever, Cena, he's whenever he comes back, he's just going to get overshadowed. Rollins doesn't belong on SmackDown. He's, he, he's got a perfect place on Raw. And if you're going to bring Ambrose over in like the real trades and do this whole Shield reunion, you kind of need Rollins there. <laughs> no Shield without Rollins. Rollins was the number one pick for Raw. He was the yeah. number one overall pick. Why would you trade him? It's and this next one doesn't even make sense either. Kevin Owens going over to SmackDown. What? I'd be interesting. I mean, you're adding some uh, some some spunk over to SmackDown, but he's the U.S. champion. Unless you plan on switching champion for champion, so that there's not just two mid card titles on one show. I I, I I'm not gonna lie. An Ambrose for Owens trade would be insane. But I honestly think oh they they're starting an Owens and Balor feud soon, so I don't think Owens yeah, is going what, anywhere. What, what would be the point of the whole Joe and KO alliance? Yeah, and they haven't Owens hasn't fought Balor yet. He, well, they were both in NXT at the same time at one point. They didn't have a feud. They didn't have a chance to get a feud together. So yeah, they did. They did. Balor beat him for the title. Beat him for the NXT oh, title. Yeah, in I'm Japan. not awake yet. Holy crap! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I woke up like an hour and a half ago. So. My memory's going to be a little foggy. I'd still like to see that. Uh, that but on the main there. roster, the uh, main card, I think yeah, I'd love to see a Balor and, and Owens again. God, I can't believe I can't remember that. Why? That's when Owen lo- Owens lost the title. See, the superstar shake of it is shaking up my head right now on my memory. So, But Kevin Owens really doesn't make sense to SmackDown. No. At this point with him holding the minor title. Yeah. Uh, another trade is one that actually we, we want to happen. It's rumored, but we actually think it's going to happen and should happen. And that's Sami Zayn going over to SmackDown. Yes, 100%. If there's, just, a, if there's a guy that needs to be traded, yeah. it's Sami Zayn. He just gets buried all the time on Raw. He's got nothing going for him. They shove him into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale and don't even make him win it. So what the hell is the point of him being on Raw? He faced Jinder Mahal on Raw this week. A random match that meant nothing and continued nothing. And that's why I think they did that. Because they needed something... To, for Sami Zayn to do to make it not obvious that he's going to get traded. I think they're, they're, it was starting to be a way of keep thinking that we're stupid and kind of taking it out of our heads that Sami getting traded. So I think he's getting traded, and he should get traded and needs to get traded to SmackDown to 
it's sad to say get his career revitalized here because he needs help right now. And I think he could be a top guy on SmackDown. And we, we've said it from the beginning of the brands, but the Zane should have went to SmackDown. I, I would mean. love to see Sami Zayn beat Randy Orton for the WWE title. I'd fucking be... That'd be, that'd be over the moon for me. But and I know I, it's not going to happen, but Sami Zayn belongs in the main title picture on SmackDown. And I feel like the guys backstage, like Road Dog and those guys, would actually appreciate Sami yeah. Zayn and actually push him into that. Or even a mid-card title. He can be Intercontinental Champion over there. I wouldn't mind that. He could, he could have a great versus, ride with that title. Zayn could have so many good matches with the guys in the mid-card right now. Yeah. Imagine Zayn and Dillinger being unreal. Oh, matches. man. <laughs> Battle of the underdogs, yeah. man. God. From the underground. Seriously, both of them are the same thing. That'd be awesome. Uh, that'd be great. Even a tag team. <laughs> oh, wow. The underdogs? Oh, my God. That'd be great. I can see it. Uh, next rumor trade, terrible. This is garbage. I don't even know why I want to talk about it. Braun Strowman to SmackDown. The why? What I mean, it makes sense because you're just burying him on Raw. He's one of those other guys just recently becoming a Sami Zayn. He's getting buried. But the, the SmackDown doesn't really have squash matches. I know. You, you, lose, you make him lose his, his winning streak at Fastlane. You bury him at WrestleMania. And now this week you make him back down from Brock Lesnar. So in showing up in the Brock Lesnar segment, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think he is There's a future feud yeah. with Brock Lesnar Strowman in the works, guaranteed. So this this rumor trade makes zero sense, and I literally just it's it's a it, brush it, off the garbage. shoulder, like get There's out of no here. There's no way it's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, move on the club over to SmackDown. I only agree with that if Styles stays on SmackDown. Yeah, I want the club. We want the club to be reunited, and, and I Styles. think Gallows and Anderson should go to SmackDown. Yeah, and they can, if Uso stay, they can beat them, make him, make, maybe make him face, because Styles is sort of like a, I know Styles is a tweener right now, but he's getting such a face reaction, maybe he can help the club get over, or maybe the, the Usos drop it to a face team, and eventually the club beats them, and then Styles becomes champion again, and they have all the titles, like, the what a way to build the club and actually make him look strong like they should have done since day one. Coming into the company, so yeah, the the club reuniting and taking over SmackDown. I'm cool. Yeah, if with the that. club go over the SmackDown, it only makes sense if Styles stays there. If Styles goes and the club goes over, what the fuck was the point? What, was the point? <laughs> what do you make a feud with the Ascension for like a two minute match and no one's gonna give a fuck about on SmackDown every week? I'm like, no, it just makes no sense. If the club goes over to SmackDown, Styles needs to stay put. Only way it makes sense. Uh, next rumor trades the new day going over to SmackDown. This has been rumored off and on for like the last couple of weeks. To me, I just don't care because like, what else is the new day going to do? They have done nothing the last month and a half, maybe two, three, three. All they were, all they did was host wrestling. Maybe SmackDown's a good thing for them. And I heard that there's an interesting part to this that they're going to move Xavier and Kofi over, and then have Biggie stay for a singles push. What? Are you go back to the Biggie Langston. Uh, you can't have the New Day with two members, man. That just is no. You might as well not even be the New Day anymore. They, they, they're only the New Day with all three members. Biggie Langston, oh, get out of here! Just, fuck it. no. But I mean, they, they but if, are, the Smack, they, if New Day goes to SmackDown, I want all three. I don't want only two. All three got to go. And they just job to the revival, so it seems like New Day is basically just. Nothing on Raw anymore. They're just they're putting over the other teams now after their longest reigning tag team title run. I think Smack. I think New Day could do good for the New Day. I don't know. It's just in my opinion, I can see them doing a lot more better and helping SmackDown a little bit in the lack of a tag team division. So SmackDown needs a lot of help with their tag teams. If you think about it, and you guys got to really think about. It, I know it's been overshadowed for a while. New Day as wrestlers are actually really good. Xavier Woods is incredibly talented. Guy okay. could even be in the, in the two five live division and stand out. So if they do split up the new day, I'd say Xavier go to the fucking cruiserweight division because he'd be in staying down there. Kofi Kingston, we all know about him. Guy's an incredible high flying wrestler, and Biggie Langston can actually like wrestle. Like For his suplexes guy. are insane. You guys can you can belly to belly someone probably twice his weight, man. The guy's insane. So if the new day go over the SmackDown, I would I would like to see a lot more wrestling from them. I know they're gonna have a lot more comedic stunts and. They're 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 basically promo addicts. Like they they're, they're better. They're almost better at promo than they are in in ring style and in ring competition. So, yeah, maybe maybe it would be cool if Xavier Woods went to SmackDown and then he also competed in the two hundred five. That'd be division. sick. I I I go with that if they decide to split the new day. I even go as Kofi too. Kofi Kingston is. I think he's. Uh, I think you know he's what? a little bit on air or not on air. I know we're offline, but right now as we're talking, I'm gonna search up Kofi Kingston's weight. I don't know if they actually like. Make sure you're under 205. Do they check them every week? Yeah. Uh, Kofi Kingston, if I look up his Wikipedia page, is 212 pounds, so he's way overweight. He's oh, no, way over. No, way over. Sorry. He's like, yeah, he's going to drop some weight. I think he'd get away with 205 life. 212 is all right. Seven so, pounds over. 
So again, so that's our new day uh, wishes, wishes, <laughs> and uh, what we expect from them if they get traded. Uh, and the last trade from uh, Raw to SmackDown is Charlotte. Ah, uh, uh, see, people have been saying this, but I just don't think Vince wants to move Charlotte off no, his. No, I don't like that either. It doesn't make sense. I, I can't see it. Literally, I think so hard, and what a good trade would be, and I don't see any of them actually working out. And I can't see Charlotte on SmackDown. She just it almost looks like she'd get too watered down and forgotten about on SmackDown. And, and if Vince and if loves Vince, Charlotte. Yeah. They they keep talking about she's gonna WrestleMania. She's gonna headline WrestleMania one day, which is impossible. I don't. I do not. I, as much as I love the women's division and want them to succeed, I highly doubt they'll highlight a WrestleMania one day. Maybe a minor pay per view like they have already. But but yeah, I, Vince I is just way too high on Charlotte. He's he. I think Charlotte is the Roman Reigns of the women's division to Vince. Yeah, I, like, I don't. She's don't think never gonna going leave anywhere. the main spotlight. This is a terrible rumor. <laughs> um, although I do think Charlotte needs some more some new feuds, which yeah. will hopefully come with the trades. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if SmackDown's the right spot for her because Vince views it as the B show and his yeah. top woman the going B to the show B show doesn't be... really make sense. Yeah. According to Vince's eyes. So those are the rumored trades, ladies and gentlemen. Um we'll get into now our trades and who we think should move. And we'll discuss and uh discuss why each trade would make sense. So we'll start off with uh, SmackDown Superstars to Raw as we did in the last part there. Uh Dean Ambrose. So that was one of the rumors, and we actually agree and think that Dean Ambrose should be moved to Monday Night Raw. It, I think it makes sense. Um, we don't know what the whole rules are with the whole dropping the title things and if t- if champions can get moved, but I think Dean Ambrose needs a, a change up. Uh, it's, so it's everybody he can. Yeah, it, it seems now. like he's slowing and slowing down more and more, and then the WrestleMania match got bumped to the pre-show. It's almost like they're they're losing kind of. He's he's losing ground in SmackDown. He needs to get moved and a change up. And I would love to see a Shield reunion. The guys are they're all faces right now. This is the perfect time to do it. <laughs> yeah. Call him a face. I don't even know um, what the hell he is. But Ambrose has faced every top guy on SmackDown, so there's really no one else he can really face. Yeah. And if they needed him to drop the title, maybe they. I was telling Cappy last night, maybe he has a match with Corbin again for the title on SmackDown this week. And if he loses, he gets he gets traded. Like there's a stipulation: if you lose the match, unfortunately you get traded to Raw. But if you win the match and retain your title, you get to stay. Maybe he loses it. Maybe Corbin wins dirty somehow and gets a title from him. So if it happens, we actually think Ambrose should get moved. It it just makes sense in our eyes. Um, here's an interesting one. We think. It's a tag team from SmackDown. American Alpha traded to Monday Night Raw. They're not doing anything on SmackDown at no. all. No. The SmackDown, they, the tag team titles aren't even being They used haven't even got Smackdown. their rematch yet. <laughs> they lost the titles to the Usos like a month ago, and they still haven't got their rematch yet. And even when they had the titles, they were wrestling on main event. It was, what, how is this showcasing your new up-and-coming tag team? I don't champions? understand this. Um, but I th- we think they'd be good on Monday Night Raw. And you know what? We, we thought about it. We talked about it. We heard other people talk about it, too. Kurt Angle taking American Alpha under his wing. And that would be awesome. They, he could come over and Kurt Angle could talk to him about, look, guys, you guys have really done nothing in the last month. Um, I traded for you guys to come over to Monday Night Raw because I think you guys are a great tag team. You remind me of Haas and Benjamin. I want to build you guys the next, like, team angle. So I'm going to give you guys some competition for coming over to Raw and, like, you know, help them out and put them in, like, matches against, I don't know, uh, the, the club or, or Enzo and Cass or the Hardys. Like, build them up. So I think that's a great move for American Alpha to move from SmackDown over to Raw. And Kurt Angle take him under the wing. I think it just makes more sense like that. And we all know the new team angle is coming one day. And we'll see. I know it's not going to happen now. If we move them over to Raw, Shelton Benjamin can't do anything with them because Shelton Benjamin is uh, SmackDown drafted. So I think it would, I it would be a revitalizing for American Actually, Alpha. Actually, no. Shelton Benjamin never got drafted to SmackDown. He only said he was going to appear. No, oh, he could pull the Undertaker treatment. They could just put him on Raw. <laughs> yeah. They make us forget. They always make us forget about shit in WWE. So yeah, but I think a move for American Alpha. I think people could get behind that. Yeah, another superstar from SmackDown to Raw, and now he's going to be built or I guess built as a singles competitor and has to be because his partner got mutually quit WWE or basically mutually fired. Aiden English going over to Raw because I don't think there's a place for him in the mid card on SmackDown. I mean, he's probably going to be low mid card. He's probably going to become a jobber at some point. But I think I mean, unless he gets repackaged. repackaged, maybe they're repackaging him. I don't think he continues with the the whole vaude villain gimmick. I think he's going to go into a singing gimmick because he is yeah. like a professional singer. Yeah. So maybe they could do something with that. I did have visions of Aiden just keeping the vaude villain gimmick, but he has to have like a manager. You know what I mean? Like he's got a 
Like, uh, you know, like the announcer. Remember when they yeah, were little, face the little guy? Yeah, maybe like <laughs> something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe so. I don't know. But just, he definitely just... needs a shake up after yeah. his uh, tag team partner was released, and they weren't doing anything anyway. So yeah. So yeah, Aiden English over from SmackDown over to Raw. Another superstar from SmackDown over to Raw that needs a resurgence, we think, and could help his career is Apollo Cruz. Going from SmackDown to Raw, he's basically become useless. They had him do this thing with Ziggler, and it kind of made him more relevant again because he was in dark matches before that. But now that that feud's done, what else are you going to do with Apollo Crews? I mean, I think he's just useless on SmackDown Raw. There's so many opportunities for him to do something. I would go as far. I don't know if he's. I'm going to check his weight too, because Apollo Crews is is sm- he's a small guy. I know he's jacked, but. Weight wise, I don't know. I think he's probably in the two thirties, two forties. If he maybe if he cut down a little bit, maybe get up to like down to two twenty, they could pass him for a two hundred five live. Because you look at some of the two hundred five live competitors, they're kind of jacked. They're almost as jacked as Apollo Cruz, like a niece. Tony Nice. Okay, so yeah, Apollo Cruz is two forty. You have to lose twenty pounds. That's really really hard to do. I don't know. They could probably get away with it if he lost maybe five or ten pounds. Who knows. But I think Apollo Cruz would do better on Raw. It, it sucks because Raw's three hours, and there's a chance for him to get buried and not useful. But he, he, we need a shakeup. At least, and Apollo Cruz would be a good shakeup, man. Yeah. He's he's done with SmackDown. At, at least he'd be on TV on yeah. Raw because on SmackDown, one of the bad SmackDown hasn't done a lot of bad things since the brand split. But one of them is definitely the Apollo misuse Cruz. Of the Apollo misuse Cruz. of Apollo Cruz is definitely one of the key points there. Um, so yeah, Apollo Cruz over to Raw. We'll see. It's a it's a fifty fifty with him going over the raw, but that's a, a good shakeup we think should happen. Um, so here's a trade from SmackDown over to Raw that was one of the rumors, but it only makes sense, and we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll include the 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 raw over to SmackDown part two, and that's Alexa Bliss. The only way we agree <laughs> that Alexa Bliss going from SmackDown to Raw is if it's for Sh- Sasha Banks, and I know it's almost biased because. Cappy just does want to see his girl feud, but I actually think it makes sense to not put them on the same brand right now. At this point in time, for both divisions' sakes, they can't be on the same brand. I think if you're going to trade Alexa Bliss over to Raw, you need someone as good as her and another one, a credible top heel, because you're going to have to make Sasha top heel. You got to trade her for Sasha Banks. She goes over to SmackDown, turns heel, and becomes your top heel for SmackDown. And I think that's a great way for Sasha to turn heel and then, I guess, maybe save the sasha Bailey feud for a couple years down the road. Yeah. That, it doesn't need to happen right now. No. Like, at this point in time, these both these girls do not need to be on the same rant and feud right now. Alexa Bliss versus Sasha is, ma- is basically a WrestleMania-type style match. Maybe the, there will be knows that. Maybe they're, they're, they're save. Hopefully they save that. That needs to be a WrestleMania match, 100%. So God. the only way Alexa Bliss goes over to, to Raw is if Sasha Banks switches the other way and becomes your top heel on SmackDown. Because there's too many people for Alexa to to hurdle over on, yeah. on the other brand. Yeah. And like I said, Sasha could be a top heel on SmackDown for sure. Yeah. That'd be great. I'd love versus, to see that. Versus Becky Lynch again. We need heel Sasha back. Everyone's been dying for heel Sasha back. Every time I, she, she appears on TV... I'm on Twitter. Everyone's like dying for heel Sasha to come back. There's so. been teases like this week. She grabbed Bailey's title and then gave it to her. Like, yeah. fuck, it's getting there. We're getting there. It's slowly, it's slowly turning. Um, next trade from SmackDown over to Raw. Natalia. I think it should no be. Pause. She needs to go over to Raw, man. She needs a, a revitalization, man. She, I think she can do a lot with uh, Monday Night Raw's division. And I think she's faced everybody that she possibly. A can Natty versus SmackDown. Charlotte feud, which we've seen in the past, I think would do good. Or Bailey, or Bailey, Natty can be the cold-hearted. Like she is heel right now, and, and go against Bailey and make fun or of her. She and, could turn face and be the Natty. You know, be like, heart. I could see a Natty versus Bailey, but like, yo, you you have no wrestling background whatsoever. You were a fan, like kind of like what Charlotte's done to Bailey. Like, yeah. look what Natty did with Nikki. That was a great yeah. feud. Yeah. So, yeah. but look what Natty. I mean, Natty and Charlotte's but we liked. I remember us reviewing that. We liked that. And, like, Ric Flair was in Charlotte's corner and Bret Hart was in yeah, Natty's except corner. except that terrible match they had where yeah. Charles Robinson rang the bell. Yeah, but that, but other than that, I think that to, to revitalize that feud, that'd be pretty cool. Um, be interesting to see who would be the heel, though, because Natty's a heel right now. But I think Natty would do good on Raw. Maybe Charlotte face turn. I'm, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, another trade. Uh, we did say uh, Carmella at first, but we scratched it. Uh, Mickey James. Else. Over to Monday Night Raw. I think she needs to go over there, put some people over. Uh, it would help maybe even Nia Jax get over. And and, it, and Raw is mostly watched by casuals, right? And casuals will remember Mickey James. Yeah, she was one of the key members of the PG Raw women's division. And if you remember 
before that, she had her a gr- one of her her highlighted feuds when against your old girl Trish Stratus. Yeah, and she beat her. I don't know you don't want to hear, her, but she beat her at WrestleMania for yeah. the title. And she's it, only one title away from tying Trish for seven women's championships. So. I think it'd be a good idea for Mickey James to go to Raw. I think it, that's I a think good shakeup. I'd love to see Mickey versus Charlotte versus Bailey. Yep, I, I love that. Be great. And the last member of the SmackDown division to go over to Raw in the Superstar shakeup, The Miz. We agree with that. Uh, I think it's it's due. I know we are fifty fifty on it, but I actually want The Miz to go over to Raw. I think he can do a lot on Raw. There's there. I can't see it right now, but I think the Raw division would be good for The Miz, and I think he can do a lot with that division. Maybe even. Feud with, a Kevin Owens and Miz feud is weird at first, but I don't know. It's almost like the only way Kevin Owens is losing that title to the Miz if it's like a fatal four way match and Miz wins like cheaply, like he he cheats to win and escapes with it, and then Owens and Balor kind of feud off it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I understand what you're saying. They don't. He doesn't lose to him directly. Yeah, but. See, the only thing I don't like about The Miz moving is that he's, like, basically the top heel on SmackDown. As much as yeah. Bray Wyatt is the champion, I think Miz is the best heel on SmackDown. Yeah. Will he be that on Raw? It's just, uh, we don't want it to happen. We, we could because agree basically- with it if it happens, and then it's it's almost like... Uh, we only say it because it's a likely trade to happen this week. And because of his, his feuds with Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon... Yeah. And he's gotten under the skin. It's almost like and I know Cena. They, they don't want to put the authority first, but in the Miz's case, it's almost he's like been they a have thorn to. in their side yeah. for everybody on that show. Yeah, but um, like he, <laughs> the top heels on Raw: Roman Reigns, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Smojo, Kevin Owens, Braun Strowman. Yeah, where does Miz fit in that? Right. So, hopefully, if Miz goes over, I really hope that they continue this momentum with him because he's done a great job on SmackDown. So we're gonna talk about. The superstars from Raw going over to SmackDown, and we'll start off with one that's interesting. You're gonna you're gonna think what What are you guys talking about at first? And Sin Cara going over to SmackDown. There's the only the one reason because we want the Lucha Dragons to reform and the tag help division. resurge the SmackDown division. On uh, yeah, the SmackDown tag team division. Uh, yeah, Sin Cara is in 205 Live, but he's never competing in it. Yeah, so ever. he's useless there. They need to bring back the Lucha Dragons. They're a great tag team. As much as they didn't get over that much. Well, they didn't get over. The, the whole Lucha. Lucha. Well, Listo like, did when he did the yeah. Salida Del Sol off the ladder. Yeah, so I think they would do good on SmackDown. It would help the tag team division, the, the slacking tag team division they have on SmackDown. So that's the first trade we think we're all to only, SmackDown. Yeah. So far in our minds, that should happen. Uh, next one, we already talked about it, Sasha Banks. Uh, Summer Rae from Raw over to SmackDown because what is she doing on Raw? I know she's injured and she's recovering from a neck injury. When she comes back, I don't see a place for her on Raw. There's nowhere for her to do anything. SmackDown, they give a lot of more opportunities to their women's division, sadly. Yep. So I think Summer Rae would do really good on SmackDown's. Uh, if she wants to get noticed and wants to get her push finally. From an actual wrestling standpoint. Yeah, uh, SmackDown would be her best bet and I think she should get sm- traded over to uh, SmackDown. I think she could. I think Summer Rae is an underrated wrestler. I think yeah. she could actually put on some decent mas- yeah. matches it, with the girls. It's unfortunate she had a bad neck injury, but she's 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 recovering. still recovering, and she still plans on coming back. I know she tweeted a, a while ago. It was like the picture of like all the the, the woman there would be, and she's like, "Hey, what the hell is my picture?" Yeah, well, right. I follow her on Snapchat, and uh, she's like been doing a lot of like hardcore training to come back. So, so I'm excited. I, I think Summer Rae can be a good uh, woman on the SmackDown division. I think that would help her a lot. Uh, next, Sami Zayn. We, it was a rumor, Unanimous. and we already said this. Uh, <laughs> it's like it, everybody in the Twitter universe wants this to happen. We need this to happen, so really not much else to say. Is it would just help Sami Zayn a lot more on SmackDown, so he needs to get traded. He needs to. There's really not, not much else to say. Get traded, Sami Zayn. Please trade him more to SmackDown. He's not appreciated at all at Raw, no. so. He's being, he's, according to our our, uh, our boy JD, he looks, <laughs> when, he, when he does his Vince Russo impersonation, so this is a Vince Russo saying this, he looks like an Uber driver. <laughs> Why? Because he wears a freaking cap like that. Why do you? How is that automatically considered an Uber driver? Vince Russo is an idiot. Um, next, the club going over SmackDown again. Like we said in the, the rumors, they would just make more sense going only, over to SmackDown. Only if Styles. Oh, and stays. only if Styles stays. That's the only reason. If they don't, club just stay on Raw. You don't need to go over there. Stay over here. I know it would help their tag team division, but no, you don't need to go over there. The only way you're going over there is Styles is there. Because Styles still wears the club logos on all his shit. So why the hell are they... Why does he keep... I know you want to always stay the club no matter what happens. You know, you're always like the click, the new click. 
but how can you be the click when you're on opposite yeah. shows? Um, and they are the new click. Look what he, look what the club did on uh, uh, Ride Along. <laughs> Freaking hilarious! The cutouts of Finn Balor and AJ Styles. That's great. Uh, here's an interesting move we think from Raw to SmackDown. Jinder Mahal. Hard body Mahal. Hard body Mahal. I think this guy needs a, another career resurgence. The guy came in, did this whole thing with Rusev because he literally had nothing else to do with him. You know, he took his steroids, he got bigger, made him look, you know, impressive, I guess. Um, his, his veins are on top of his veins now. Ooh, that's so impressive. Maybe he could be in a good mid card. Yeah, and had a useless match with Sami Zayn this week. So you just go over to SmackDown. There's some things you can do over there. Help put people over. That was the main reason Jinder Mahal came back to WWE in the first place. It was for you know another shot in WWE and to help put the well, young talent over. We've, and we've, that's where SmackDown is. SmackDown has a lot of young talent that you can help put yeah. over. Maybe help put over Ty Dillinger. We, we've you know. seen glimpses that he's actually a pretty good wrestler. Yeah. So, so we'll see. We were. I was gonna say we were gonna say Rusev originally, but because he's injured, we yeah. don't think he's gonna leave. Get traded. I don't see it. Uh, unless like he does get traded and like Lana's there on his behalf and speaking on his behalf, whatever. Uh, next trade we think should happen again. Uh, I can't say it would help her career because she's still need. I, in my mind, she still needs to go down to development and help uh, help re- <laughs> revitalize her wrestling technique. Dana Brooke going over to SmackDown. Because she Smackdown. is completely useless on Raw. Yeah, she's broken off from Charlotte now. What else do you need? You can't look like buddy buddies with with Charlotte. And it just it's weird. It cringes me like she's in the ring with Bailey and Sasha and hugging them like a month ago. You fr- Sasha attacked you less than a month ago with a crutch. <laughs> You came How out, are you hugging her already? You came out during Sasha's retirement speech. Yeah. And then, like, she it, she oh just looks so God. out of place with them. Yeah. She's not doing it. She's literally the bottom feeder of the women's division on Raw. So, again, like Summer Rae, I think it would help her a bit on SmackDown. I know she bought she, I just need her, think her in-ring techniques to improve a little bit. And if it does, SmackDown looks like a good opportunity for Dana Brooke. That's just you know, that's all I got. That's all I got like, for Dana Brooke. Unless you want her to be the jobber of the women's division on Raw for the next two years. Or she can go over to SmackDown and be the jobber for the Raw or SmackDown. Women. She should be the put, person that put people over on SmackDown. But she's, again, she's considered a young talent. She's only been WWE on the main roster for like a year now, a year and a half. So Maybe, maybe they give her time to, in matches. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't want to cringe thinking about a Dana Brooke 10-minute match. It's just but... like, I don't know. Hers is just like, I can't really say much about her because she's bad. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll move on, and a trade we think should happen in the tag team division. It would help maybe resurge, again, the, the the lack of a SmackDown tag team division. That's Enzo and Cass going over to SmackDown and reuniting with Carmella, and that's why we said Carmella shouldn't be moved. And I think it would be good for the SmackDown. Can you imagine those guys in the promos for SmackDown? That'd be great. And then Enzo, or Cass can kick the shit out of Els Worthless Yeah, get him the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. And then there goes that. You know we're going to see an Enzo and and. James Ellsworth match. It's going to last like 10 minutes. <laughs> well, they're both almost the same height. Yeah. But Enzo and Cass are really... They, they were getting booed this week on Raw. Yeah. Like, nobody cares about them on Raw anymore. They're getting overshadowed. It's slowly getting that bad, man. They're getting overshadowed. Now they get the revival in there. Because like, they've got the revival, the Hardys, Cesaro and Sheamus. Sheamus, the club. I mean, if they don't get moved. And, and they haven't been used properly Golden on Raw. Golden Truth, the Shining Stars. <laughs> they're basically with those two teams, yeah. <laughs> which is sad. So Enzo and Cass, I think, would benefit going over SmackDown. Bring back Carmella into the fold. I could see it happen. I could see that storyline. Them getting traded and Carmella basically just dropping Ellsworth like a, you know, like a flaw, the fucking bottom feeder yeah, that he is. He's a shit. <laughs> and <laughs> like a useless the, crap guy who shouldn't be there. Yep. And there's something else interesting that we're going to get into with another call up. Oh. To go with them as well. We think there'd be a cool storyline there. Uh, are you talking about the NXT call ups? Yep. And that's what we'll get into the NXT call ups. And we'll just start off the two. We got uh, a tag team and a singles competitor going to SmackDown. And we'll talk about the tag team, and that's DIY. God, unbelievable wrestling. So now we know that the revival's on Raw. DIY needs to go to SmackDown. You, you put a really good ta- NXT tag team on Raw, you got to put the next one on SmackDown. That would, again, help the SmackDown tag team division. I see a lot of good feuds with DIY with Enzo and Cass. Uh, the Ascension, maybe. Maybe if you start making the Ascension look better, have DIY overcome them and beat them because they never could do it with freaking the Office of Pain because they were just handed everything down there. So you revitalize the SmackDown tag team division with Enzo and Cass, the club. DIY, DIY 
uh, and the Lucha Dragons. There's yeah. four yeah. credible tag teams right there yeah. compared to what they have right yeah. now. You keep the Usos there, and then you move over American Alpha, then you got there. You got your SmackDown tag team division right there, and you got you add the Ascension into that fold. And there you go. You got it. You got a division. Zongo. You got a division. Got a division right there. What's why are they not put on TV? I know you only got two hours, but you have so many things you can do. With Smack but I guess because they realize that the division is bare right now. The shelves yeah. are bare. But yeah. two, the Usos and American Alpha are the only two credible tag teams they have on that shelf. So DIY needs to call – if they get called up, SmackDown is the perfect destination and the fit for them. Raw, they would just get buried. And it would revitalize that tag team. Yeah. It would be so good, the SmackDown tag team division, with the yeah. rumored trades that we have. Yeah. And uh, the next SmackDown call-up is singles man. This is where we, we said it would get interesting. Liv Morgan. You only live once. Because she's oh, not man. really – she's overshadowed on NXT right now, and it wasn't like – Dana Brooke was called up randomly, so I'm sure Liv Morgan could do it as well. And I, and I can't say I'm a day one Liv Morgan. I'm a sort of day one, maybe like day 20 Liv Morgan fan. Um, I didn't – at first I didn't know what was going on with her gimmick or what she was until uh, it kind of like built on me. I'm like, okay, I kind of like this guy. And, you know, Liv Morgan, mm. yeah. But I think they could do an interesting storyline. And she's of, young, 22 uh, years old Liv Morgan. Yeah. She's got – so much potential in her, and she's already been wrestling with Sasha and Bailey on Raw house shows. Yeah, uh, in so, the last couple months, and, and I she's think, good. I like her character. A lot of people give shit on Liv Morgan. I I like her character. I love her, the whole thing she's about. She's she, song. She, yo, she, yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. Yo, she yo. fits in with the uh, the casual like the kids of this generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? She she fits in with, all, and that's what WWE loves in a character, and that's what they love doing. They, they they love playing to the kids of the casual universe. And Liv Morgan's that perfect woman for that spot, I think. And then she can have an interesting feud with Carmella. Girls are both there. Oh, is it Carmella's from Staten Island and uh, Liv Morgan's from, what, New Jersey? Yeah, but I so. think it would be an interesting dynamic with Enzo and Cass. Maybe have those two fight over who's going to be their manager kind right. of thing. Yeah. Have those two feud over. Yeah. Who, like, they both say that they're, oh, I'm with Enzo and Cass. No, I'm with Enzo and or Cass. Or maybe Carmella then. stays with Enzo and Cass. And then Liv Morgan finds another tag team, DIY. There you go. Or... Manages you could, them. You could do the um, Lover Boy storyline. Have, en- have Enzo and Liv versus Cass and Carmella. Oh have my they all god! Can you up? imagine? Whole yeah. the, the, the possibilities with this are endless. So that's what we think. If Liv Morgan gets called up, because I don't think she's going to be pushed anywhere into the NXT Women's no, title Ember picture. Moon is going to be the next. Yeah. and then you, it looks like they're going to include Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Um, Liv Morgan is just going to get overshadowed, so she needs to get called up in SmackDown again. Great destination for her. And if they don't do the whole Enzo and Cass thing, Liv Morgan can build up that SmackDown. Well, not not build up because it's already been built up. But, you know, be another credible woman on there because they like using everybody in that division. So. And, and it gives a new new fresh blood, you know? Yeah, I like it. And we'll talk about the NXT Cults for Raw. And <laughs> both of them are... Uh, they'll help the mid-card jobber level, basically. And that's what we like and we think the shakeup should focus on. So first call-up, and it's been rumored that he's being going to get called up soon, is uh, Andred Sion Almas. He's actually had some really and good matches on he's, NXT. Yeah, lately. he's built up his and he's built up his promo work. His promo before uh, Alistair Black was really good, um, and he's his in ring work is awesome. The the way he he's a heel for one. The way he does and presents himself in the ring is amazing. Like there's some uh, spots where he like lands himself in the rope like a spider. He's just like all relaxing yeah. on it. He, he's, he's got that he's, cocky attitude. Yeah, that's what I, like I mean. It. The cocky attitude of him. They'd be a really great heel mid card level talent, and he's he's really talented. Even maybe because he's pretty he's pretty skinny and he's pretty small. I'm gonna check right now to see if he's uh, tool five live uh, eligibility eligible. Yeah, I got his thing as La Sombra right here on Wikipedia. <laughs> he's 27 years old. He weighs in at 180 pounds. There you go. There you go. Perfect fit for the tool five live. If they go over there, if not. Uh, Raw's mid card level will be a perfect surgeons for him and a resurgence because the mid card level is all shaky on Monday Night Raw. So, seeing almost would definitely, definitely be a big a help. Good wrestler, yeah, really, really good wrestler. So, <laughs> this last, the last one, <laughs> it's been rumored because him. of the whole NXT and Lever, loser leaves NXT match. So he left as Elias Samson and came back a week later at Takeover. The same, he's dressed the same, just with a luchador mask, and it's called El Vagabundo. <laughs> <laughs> So we think Al Vagabundo is going to get called up. There's think, no way he just stays on NXT. I think Elias Sampson could be a good Raw character. He he yeah. can he can do the good promo work that Raw yeah. loves to do. And he gets so much heat too. Yeah. But he got he got. I know he got uh, cheered at NXT Takeover Orlando, but that's because it's the WrestleMania crowd. Yeah. They cheer everybody that should get booed. Yeah. So he, uh, <laughs> he could definitely do something with his guitar gimmick or yeah. keep this El Vagabundo thing for yeah. a while until he gets unmasked. I like that El Vagabundo thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> but Raw is a way to go. But, I think Raw would help Raw. It'd be a good three-hour filler because you know there's going to yeah. be a lot of filler on Monday Night I Raw. I think you could definitely be entertaining for the Raw yeah. division. So those are, those are the call-ups. I like the call-ups. I really, really do. Um, uh, should we get into the tweets? The tweets. Oh, yes. So I asked you guys out there, name us one uh, – is it one trade yep. that you guys you want, want to see? Yeah, you want Sheamus to get traded. Sheamus. If, if the whole Cesaro and Sheamus thing wouldn't have been working out so well, we definitely would have said Cesaro to SmackDown. But yeah, but that that's worked out so well. So they they don't need to get split up. So we got your answers out there. I told you, name me one tweet. Some of you guys name me a couple more, but whatever, that's all right. Uh, we'll start off with Luke Hawkinson at Laughing Shovel. Braun Strowman for Randy Orton. <laughs> get them both out of the shit booking they're in. Would have Randy Orton drop title to Bray on SmackDown first. They would never let him do yeah. that. No, the only I only agree with this at the last part. If you brought it back to Bray, because Bray should have been champion in the first place. Randy Orton should have never won the title. But I again, Luke Thomas, we don't think Braun Strowman's getting traded. I don't traded. think there's a place for Braun on SmackDown, no. especially and, if the, you, if you want him to stay the singles. Yeah, if you bring him to SmackDown, there's always going to be that Wyatt family yeah. reunion. Thing there's a the match with Lesnar down the line. We know it's going to happen, so, so it can't happen when he's on SmackDown, but. I agree. Randy Orton give, dropping the title to Bray. That's we need that to happen. And the, the match is basically announced uh, for Backlash: Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt in a House of Horrors match. So, yeah, it's a good, good thought, Luke Tonkinson, but it probably won't happen. Um, next set of tweets: Casey Salas, Salas ninety four. He puts Sami Zayn from Mojo Raleigh. Great for Sa- great for Zayn. We will never have to see Raleigh on Raw because, or because he will be buried. <laughs> I like that trade. <laughs> I, I just really don't yeah. care about Mojo Raleigh. Even that's what he means. He's winning like, Zane, the Andre would be good. Yeah, Zayn would do good for going to SmackDown. You could just put Raleigh on Raw because he could, he'll have no place. You can job to shine. Roman or something. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, I like he, that. He also like he puts an interesting trade here. Dean Ambrose for Kevin Owens. What I said earlier in the, the video here. But I just don't. Why would they do the whole Samoa Joe? Yeah. And Kevin Owens with Triple yeah. H storyline if Owens is going to get moved. Unless all of a sudden they got scrapped because things changed WWE be on a fucking dime. Man. And isn't just... Jericho supposed to get his rematch with Owens at some point? Supposed like, I feel like to, but I, I keep reading there's injury angles. They're, they're, they're trying to pull this injury angle on Jericho so he can go do his stuff. And apparently he's got shit planned for payback weekend, so I don't think he's even going to be there. I think they're doing Balor and, and Owens again. I think Owens is going to be there, or Balor's going to be the replacement. I think Balor might even win the U.S. title, man. Maybe that's why they're slowly going to build him back up. I don't know. I know he should be in the main card already, but in Owens versus uh, Balor food for the U.S. title, fucking take my money. I'll watch that. <laughs> uh, another tweet. Glorious Greg, X gilly 929 American Alpha for the club. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's exactly That'd one be of the a sick trade. That's a sick trade. I like that. We like that a lot. It's like it's like you read our mind, Glorious Greg. Yeah. <laughs> a glorious tweet there from Glorious Greg. Uh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Last tweet. Colin at Gamma New One. American Alpha swap for Cesaro and Sheamus. I wow. Can, I That's can, a good yeah. trade. Oh, my God. We agree with the American Alpha yeah. part. The Cesaro and Sheamus is That's, an interesting dynamic, mm-hmm. but the only problem is that they're currently the number one contenders for the yeah. Hardys ta- title. Yeah. That's the only thing I see wrong with If that. the shakeup was after payback, yeah. That's interesting. That's awesome, though, because then you could eventually, when they split up, Cesaro can become one of your top guys on SmackDown, which we've always wanted yeah. him to be. But that's that's a really interesting trade. I like it. And a lot. Unfortunately, those are it for the tra- uh, the tweets. I did put it out really late. We I put it out last night. And we're recording this today on Sunday. <laughs> so next time I'll try to get the yeah. tweet earlier. And we'll but, think. But this was this last minute because yeah, the shakeup was last minute for making the yeah. last minute shakeup thing. Uh, we wanted to do a draft episode with Michael Chow. We may still do it later down the line. We'll see. Um, they might still have a draft. You never yeah. know. So those are it for the tweets, guys. So let's get into the last part of the show. I got some news and I'll play it. Hit that headline music. All right, welcome to WWE Headlines, I guess, part two this week. <laughs> and we got some news and rumors, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to start off with one I retweeted uh, about a day ago now. And uh, WWE has signed brother or sister of Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas, Mika Rotunda. Oh, interesting! And she looks like, uh, literally, she looks yeah, like she a looks mix like of Bo Dallas. Dallas and Bray Wyatt. Like she, she—that's definitely the, you could tell she's the sister. You probably could tell if you didn't even look, if you even know who it was. But uh, Mike Rotunda, the sister of Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas, uh, fo- uh, sorry, and uh, f- daughter of former WWE Tag Team Champion Mike Rotunda, aka Erwin R. Scheister, IRS. Yeah, 
Mika has landed a job with the WWE in a backstage capacity. She worked on the production end during WrestleMania 33. So she was behind the whole CGI shit. So we, we think the whole backstage job Dang, is yeah, bullshit. Is bullshit. Uh, a little backstory in uh, Mika. Uh, she graduated from Connecticut School of Broadcasting in 2013. Her resume includes working as a production assistant intern for Tampa's WTOG TV and associate producer for Blue Water Media in Largo, Florida. There's no word on whether she is being brought in to work full-time for the future work with WWE, but working on the biggest show of the year is a nice start. She had a trial at the Performance Center in 2015 to become a ring announcer, so would not let, I would not bet on her becoming an in-ring performer anytime soon. Um, everyone's like, oh, that's a shame because everyone thought she was going to be a sister Abigail. She still can be. She doesn't have to be physical to be a manager. She can just be there and appear because she's... She's great at production, as I just said. She has a background in production. She can product herself. <laughs> I think if she, I think she's Sister Abigail. Literally, man, I, I wouldn't would be surprised, be awesome. ladies and gentlemen, if she's going to be the future Sister Abigail. They could definitely give her like makeup to make her yeah. look dead, or I think it would yeah. be cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. So she was behind the whole CGI and effects for the end of WrestleMania 33. So the Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton match. Ooh. As much as you didn't like it. Because Orton didn't sell it at all. Yeah, I didn't like it. It didn't sell. It worked if 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 Randy Orton sold it. But guy, the guy is is, is exciting Orton. as a brick. So <laughs> he's he's as exciting as watching paint dry. <laughs> so that's why he couldn't sell it properly. Other news: We got an update on Kurt Angle. According to the Wrestling Observer newsletter editor Dave Meltzer, Kurt Angle will wrestle again in WWE if he can pass a physical, which is going to happen sometime soon. Apparently, two months. Two months. So. Uh, He's getting there. Uh, we think later down the line he'll have probably a feud with a superstar. Who knows? I think, I think him and Joe again would be awesome. Oh, that'd be great. I think that's a good WWE match. So that's your update on Kurt Angle. And Jump. Nothing else much to say about that. Last update and the last bit of news uh, has to do with the whole Mal Ronaldo. Uh, and it's coming out more and more. That it, and it looks like it's JBL, man. We're here. We're, we're having more and more people come out now. And more news come out about JBL, especially Justin Roberts. Gets this written in his book. I still got to. I want to read his book now. And and see what JBL's done. I guess JBL is, is a bully, and he's been a bully for a long time. And if that's the case, why is WWE sticking up for this guy? Especially when they're doing this whole anti-bullying campaign, be yeah. a star thing. Yeah, CM Punk. <laughs> there really should be. Yeah, there really should be no none of that going on. Especially when WWE has all this. I, I don't this understand. Like, with that. do they not give a shit about mental health? Like, I thought WWE was all for that. So they're basically contradicting themselves. WWE. And now they've got this whole hashtag fire JBL trending on Twitter right Man, now. it's getting big. Like, there, as much as anybody doesn't want to say, social media can take over and could literally be the reason why JBL gets fired anytime soon. And you know what? I'm all for it. If this guy's a jackass backstage, get rid of him. If it's it bad, sends a message. Look that... what it did to Ronaldo, man. The yeah. guy's basically leaving the company as soon as his contract's done. I'm going to get into it right now. On SmackDown Live announcer, Ma Ronaldo has been off television for almost a month now. And with no air, or no on-air references to him since Tom Phillips said he's been out sick on the March 21st episode, there's been a great speculation about Ronaldo's stats with WWE. Fans noticed on this past Friday, Ronaldo removed references to WWE from his Twitter bio. It used to say he was a WWE commentator, but now the bio simply reads Showtime Boxing at Root and Ronaldo Combat Sports Carousel Mental Health Advocate. In addition, Ronaldo has deleted several tweets about his absence from the WWE. PWInsider.com reached out to WWE on Ronaldo's status in the company and received the following statement. Ronaldo remains under contract with WWE until August 12, 2017. Uh, Ronaldo has been active on Twitter in recent days promoting both an upcoming Showtime boxing appearance and his podcast with MMA legend Bass Rutten. Rutten and Ronaldo. He has also hinted at returning calling mixed martial arts soon. So it almost looked like Ronaldo's going to play the... I know it's not really playing it, but the sick card until his contract's on. So, okay, I'm out of here now. Well, I don't think they're going to want to bring him back anyways at this point with the yeah. whole... With the controversy that has come with it. Yeah. But if they really wanted to send a message, fire JBL. Yeah. You, you fire a credible guy that's been a world champion yeah. because of something serious like that, and it sends a message to your locker yeah, yeah, saying yeah. That's, not, that's not acceptable. They did it to Hulk Hogan. Guy had some shit that had nothing and to do with the way, That was Hulk Hogan never bullied years. anyone. She did shit on his personal life that got leaked out, and you freaking forgot about him like he was a piece of shit. But you this keep this guy around this who's current. But then you're keeping this guy around who's been bullying people in the past. Basically, the reason why Justin Roberts isn't there anymore 
and now you're get, basically going to get rid of one of your best commentators since Jim Ross. How the fuck do you still keep JBL around? And it's not like he's, he brings so much to the announce table that you need to have him there. And if this comes out and he gets fired and this is all true, I'm sorry, Brandon. You need to bring over the JBL for rating signs and we need to burn them. <laughs> well, we'll, we're, we are, we'll keep the equals ratings, but we'll yeah. burn the JBL part. Because I'm not really – I can't say I'm, I'm sitting here an advocate for mental health, but – it really pisses me off when someone doesn't take mental health seriously because it is a serious issue. And when people say, no, it's people just being whining babies and, like, no, you not. obviously don't know anything. Mental health is a big issue in the world today. And there's – there's, it, it, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I guess I am an advocate because I think there's less awareness about it and should be more awareness about it, especially in Ronaldo's case with his uh, – it's bipolar disease. That's a serious illness, and it clearly is affecting Ronaldo because the guy's really on his way out now. So it's a shame. And at, me personally, as a social worker, I've worked with many people yeah. with mental Ill- mental illness and mental health problems, and it is a big problem. It is not just yeah. them being lazy or, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's, it's unfortunate. Sad. And J- if JBL is really doing that, then he needs to go. Like, unfortunately. It, it, if they're not going to get rid of him, that's not going to stop him from doing this in the in the what future I mean? with that more people. It sets, if you fire him, it sets an example to the locker room saying that this is not acceptable. Yeah. We will not allow this to happen. Right? So uh, that's our thoughts on that. And hopefully Ronaldo – we die to have Ronaldo back. Yeah. It's a, it's really – it seriously is unfortunate. I, He's been – again, he's been the best commentator since Jim Ross. As much as I want to give credit to other people like uh, – like Corey Gray has been really good. Michael Tom Cole is Michael right. Cole. Michael, he, he speaks for himself. I know Saxon's trying to learn, and uh, Otonga, I can't really They're say They're trying to groom Otonga's, Tom Phillips yeah. to take over Michael Cole's spot. Yeah, it's just... It, you Ronaldo need a commentator like Ronaldo, because he's so enthusiastic, and I don't understand what the people out there that don't like his commentating style. He gets you excited in the match. You don't want a commentator going, oh, wow, look at that it's like, and You know, I know there, you know, there has to do it. It's storytelling, but a lot of commentators don't even pay attention to the match, especially when there's other wrestlers on commentary. Oh, they, the worst. they literally pay zero attention to the match, and I'm sitting there going, okay, call the match. I don't give a shit about this guy on commentary. Call the freaking match. And Ronaldo actually knows the moves of mostly yeah. every single wrestling move that's out there, and he yeah. actually says it like it's supposed to be called. Yeah. A wrestling match is supposed to be called. He does it the right way. Yeah. So other than that, guys, that is our, uh, those are the rumors trades for the Superstar Shake-Up this week and uh, our opinions and who we think should get traded. So it's going to be an interesting week coming up this week on Raw and SmackDown. So uh, it's going to be... We'll see what happens. What do you guys think? What do you guys think out there? Let us know. And uh, we'll see what happens this week and then we'll go over our uh, reviews. Again, the Lowdown Show recorded every Thursday and Friday. Or for, yeah, Thursday or Friday. Yeah, <laughs> live. Just stay, just stay tuned to our Twitter account. You'll know when we'll tweet. I always tweet out when we're going to do it and around what time, uh, whether it's early or not. But that's going to do it today. And that's going to... Whoa. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for the uh, special episode of the Sunday Night Heat entitled WWE Superstar Shakeup. Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian based WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. This episode of the Sunday Heat is recorded offline right here on Spreaker, and after it's done being recorded, we're going to post the info on Spreaker itself, YouTube, and on iTunes by searching up the Lowdown Show Brand Wars. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP and join in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We're also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. I'm your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, joined by Corporate Cappy, yep. the Blissful Boss. And that's going to do it for this episode. See you next time.